Something as simple as talking takes thousands of thoughts, and we do it with such ease that we barely notice we're even doing it. Our ability to talk, or more precisely, the way we use language, from the moment we are born, defines us as human. This is a graph measuring what ages can easily learn a new language. If you look at the horizontal line and find your age, it shows you where on the vertical line your chances lie on learning a new language. There is a curve that dramatically drops. There are no cognitive scientists that dispute this theory, but researchers are still trying to understand why this happens. And that brings up the following questions. How do babies develop language? What can caretakers do to promote language development? How is it possible to communicate with a baby? And can a baby be too young to learn a language? Well, we already know the answer to the last question. The answer is no. The early stages of language are communication through noises, gestures, and facial expressions. There are other ways of communicating with a baby besides talking. All their senses are functioning at birth. They have open eyes, sensitive ears, and responsive noses, tongues, and skin. And throughout the first year, infants use the senses to sort and classify everything they experience. The sense of hearing develops during the last trimester of pregnancy and is already quite acute at birth. Infants become accustomed to the rules of their language. And babies use every bit of their concentration when listening and observing another human being speak. All five senses function at birth, although hearing is far more superior than vision, probably because of experience. The fetus has much more to hear than to see. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. This high-tech machine is called magnetoencephalography, more easily known as an MEG. It is a technique for mapping brain activity by recording magnetic fields produced by electrical currents occurring naturally in the brain using an array of squids, which are superconductivity quantum interference devices. MEG has been used to study cognitive processes such as vision, auditory senses, and language processing in fetus and newborns. We want to get inside the brain and see this thing happening as babies are in front of televisions as opposed to in front of human beings. Thankfully, we have a new machine, magnetoencephalography, that allows us to do this. It looks like a hair dryer from Mars, but it's completely safe, completely non-invasive, and silent. And babies, we're looking at millimeter accuracy with regard to spatial and millisecond accuracy. Using 306 squids, these are superconducting quantum interference devices, to pick up the magnetic fields that change as we do our thinking. We're the first in the world to record babies in an MEG machine while they are learning. So this is little Emma. She's a six-monther. And she's listening to various languages in the earphones. You can see she can move around. We're tracking her head with little pellets in a cap. So she's free to move, completely unconstrained. It's a technical tour de force. What are we seeing? We're seeing the baby brain. As the baby hears a word in her language, the auditory areas light up, and then subsequently areas surrounding it that we think are related to coherence, getting the brain coordinated with its different areas, and causality, one brain area causing another to activate. Another way to test our questions is by observational studies. This technique is used all over the world. The baby sits on a parent's lap and they are trained to turn their head when the sound they hear changes. If they do so at the appropriate time, a black box lights up and a toy surprise appears. 
The babies no more than six months old can discriminate all of the sounds all over the world, no matter what language is being tested. Adults cannot. Studies show that the change happens before the first birthday. Can a baby as young as six months old hear the difference between two vowels? This baby is trained to look for the toy when the sound changes. She's being distracted, so she'll turn only when she hears the difference in sounds. The key question, will she turn before the toy lights up? The only way to understand how a young child learns to speak would be to see and hear them 24 hours a day, every day. This is cognitive scientist Dr. Deb Roy from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and he did this. He turned his house into his own observation experiment and monitored every move, every sound, and every interaction his son made in the first three years of his life. It's called the Speech Home Project. Over 240,000 hours of recordings were taken and there are 16 million words to be analyzed. It's a lot of data, but in its raw form, it's useless. And so the challenges this now sets up for us is how to start extracting uh, the right kind of metadata, transcripts of who said what, annotations of where those people were, annotations of how they're moving, and the relationships that they were in as they were speaking. And these are the, the tools that we're now building um, to analyze the raw data, and from that we're starting to see some, some early insights into the patterns of language development. Okay, water? 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 Water. With experiments like Dr. Roy's or machines like the MEG, scientists can begin to piece together information and answer the questions that seemed so simple. There are three main language development theories. One is the behaviorist view, two, the social cognitive perspective, and three, the nativist theory. The behaviorist view is when children learn language through reinforcements. As they do things, they are reinforced and rewarded over time. For example, when a baby speaks for the first time, the mother or anyone around reinforces by paying attention to the actions being done. The baby will make connections with what it did and the rewards received. Social cognitive perspective is learning language through role modeling. Children see other children and infants imitate older others. The main focus is interaction. The nativist theory. Noam Chomsky proposed that language is a universal trait and that learning language is innate. The natural system is called language acquisition device, or LAD. The LAD is an organ of the brain that is supposed to function as a device for learning symbolic language.